Oh, hey everybody, here, here, Becky with another video. This time, I have a little bit of a mail haul unboxing. Um, I have a package here, packages here that came in the post, so I thought I would open them up on camera and show you what I got. So, the first one is from China. Um, so, of course, there's a lot to get here. I saved more money doing that. So, snail came in this neat little bag. So these are a whole bunch of the animal um, sunny angels. Um, I love the sunny angels, but um, I can't really afford to like buy like every single one box of them. Um, so I ended up finding these online, um, super cheap. So they're basically about the I think they were actually like cheaper than the cost of the actual blind bags. They look kind of like they might be bootlegged. I'm not entirely certain looking at them. They, look like they might be free sculpted. I'm not entirely certain not to compare them to my other one. But um I think they they might be like that might be why. <laughs> They're an old like version, so I thought that that was why. But they might be like resculpts too, but they're still cute, so don't really don't really mind that much. Um, some of them have a really big seam on the butt. So I got a sunny angel that was similar from a different seller as like a freebie on like a keychain. So I don't know if maybe they're just supposed to be like this, but they seem like lower quality than the ones I did a blind box review of. So, are they bootlegs? I think maybe they might be. I'm not entirely certain. But you can see the seam there. But if you display them from the front, and their heads are really squishy. So, let's go them up. For four bugs, what do you, can you say? <laughs> this one has like a scratch on the eye. I don't know if maybe these were just like the older ones or what, or if they're bootlegs. There's a piggy. This looks like a bear. A little bear. And then the last one is a fawn. He is green. So I got, I think, one, two, three, four. So I got eight of them, these little guys. Um, I just thought they were cute and for four bucks. So I was like, I like the funny angel things, so I'll get them. Um, so onward to the next packages. I already know from the noise what's in this one um, without even have looked at the front or anything. I knew exactly what it was from. What it was, I mean. Um, this actually came really, really quick. Um, I got this after going to Boston for a meeting for work. And I stopped in at uh, 1630 in Boston. Um, I think it's called 1630 Boston, um, which is a cool little pop up, like antique store. Um, it's a wonderful store, I love it. But they price their stuff really high. Um, so usually I end up going in there, seeing stuff, looking online, and finding it for like half the price. Or I'll, buy, or I'll um, see something and I will find it later at another antique shop um, for like, again, like half the price or like way cheaper. Um, so, which is sad because I see and notice a lot of times that 
a lot of their stuff stays there for a long time. Um, so, especially during the, like during the tourist season, um, stuff seems to move a little bit more quickly, but I think that's just because they have more tourist people who don't know much about antiques and stuff, so they're not like big collectors, so they just see an item and go, oh, that's cool, and they buy it. Um, and a lot of stuff in Fanny Hall Marketplace where it is, is overpriced anyway. I mean, hell, you go to Urban Outfitters and Happy Little Places. Um, stuff is way overpriced. Um, so I always, like, buy stuff. Um, I, I saw, like, like, my Christmas sweater that I got for Christmas this year. Um, I originally saw at the, um, comic book store, New Beer Comics, in Fanny Hall Market Marketplace, and I immediately went on to the company website for Tipsy Elves themselves, and they were selling it for way cheaper and... To begin with, regular price, plus they had a sale going on. So I like mentioned it to the store owner. I was like, you do realize that you're selling a product for like not even the list price on their website, and they're selling it cheaper. So even with shipping, I paid a good majority less than what they were selling it. So if you're going to Fano Hall or pretty much most of the tourist areas, like Boston or probably any other city, you're going to be paying more for stuff. So, I don't do that. I kind of just go in, check stuff out, and I'm smart about it. <laughs> so I, re I realize what the price of it, the item is supposed to be. So it works in my favor. But uh, hopefully the ones they have get a nice home, though. Even though they are overpriced. I still wish them a good home. Maybe someone can haggle and uh, get them for a lower price to match more what they're worth. Um, but they're cool. The packers are nice and neat for me. And I believe the one I saw um, in this store was a different color as well. Um, but I really didn't care care about what color it was. Um, I don't know if I got a picture of it or anything. I might have. But it was this whirlpool, um, the whirlpool puzzle. Um, get the get a ball on each hole and made in England by Dermot Co. London. Um, that's the back, um, and it's basically in pretty much exact same condition that the one um, at 1630 was. Um, just I think the other one in 1630 was in a red, which this one um, I actually got a second one with because it came as a set so I got another puzzle by the same series um, and it is the Miller Toast Puzzle um, and it says instructions charge the four glasses so you have these little bead things and they go in the glasses um, so I like the illustration on that one they did not have this one in the store um, the next package I have is the other one they had in the store um, but they did have this one, um, it was probably in this red color. Um, but I ended up getting both of these for cheaper altogether, even with shipping, for what I would have paid for just the one at the store. So, um, it was at least a, like, three to four dollar, um, like, like, cheaper than what I would have paid in the store for just the one. So it tells you how... Um, they don't price things very well, um, which I feel like if they price things a little better, things would probably be flying off the shelves a little bit faster, um, but they don't seem to be doing that. Which I have mentioned a couple times to them, um, yeah, I love their store and they have great stuff, but they, 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 uh, again, price things way too high. So... I don't own it, so. But it could always be, too, that the person who is curating the store um, pays too much for the item originally, and then when you want to make your money back or make a profit, 
you've bought in something and you've bought in it for way higher than it's than it should be, um, you're kind of losing out because you need to price it higher. And then most people who are serious antique people like me are going to immediately go, why did you buy that for that price? That would be this, this one's where it came with. says, Jai, thank you for your purchase. Enjoy in good health. Um, and then I don't know. So that's a little thank you letter I got. You're welcome, seller. So again, this one was way cheaper than um, what I would have paid for it at the antique shop. Same item, same condition. Um, at least from what I saw. So let's see, and they bought it nice, wrapped it nice for packaging. And these came super quick too, super, super quick. So this is the other one. There's a pin you ring it puzzle. And get the rings on the proper pins. And then it's again made by the same company. So it's this old game. Um, again, same condition. Um, everything um, and I paid for this one um, I think it was like half of what they were selling it on in store which again a lot of the items I see in their shop I can find on eBay including shipping for half of what they're selling it in store so and these this came uh, I was there three days ago and it's already here so what I had to wait three days, um, I'd rather save half, I'd rather get 50% off and wait three days than, uh, than lose out on money. But, um, but yeah, I'm again, a antique person, so I know this stuff. So I'm sure they, they're trying to more target people who are not big antique people. But yeah, there's nothing to say that I don't like this store. I love going in that store, and occasionally I do find items that are priced reasonable. They're priced um, at a level that I understand. So, so I have purchased quite a few items from that store, um, and I love the people that work there. They're awesome. But uh, again, I just think sometimes to be more competitive, they could um, lower prices on certain things. So they do have them quite high. So that is my little, so I have my three puzzle games. These are the main things. Um, I just want to take a quick look at my Sunny Angels and see uh, the difference between the cheapy ones that I got and the ones I got in the blind box. Okay, so I am back and here is the, here is one of the Sunny Angels that I got um, from one of the blind boxes I bought. Um, and you can see there's no seam or anything, um, and everything is solid. Um, it's not squishy, there's no squishy head or anything. Whereas the cheapy, what is most likely a knockoff, um, one, there is that seam. Um, it's a very thin, um, plastic. This is a heavy duty, um, and then that squishy head. But, uh. And then, of course, there's a little bit less detail in, like, the face with, like, little blush and stuff um, in the two. But from far away, um, they're still cute. So, again, as I said, um, I saw them for four bucks, and I was like, eh, I don't know quite what I'm getting. But uh, four bucks, I'm not going to lose out. So, they're still cute. So, but yeah. That's it for this little mail unboxing. I love these puzzles. Um, I love this. I think I got three primary colors of yellow, red, and blue. Um, and again, they're all great condition. Um, so I think they're from the. Can't remember what they said. I think they're from the 30s. Is what someone said. I'm not entirely certain. I will probably put it in the description. Um, what like age these are? This is there. 
of the popular portable puzzles proving positively perplexing and perpetually pleasing posers, presenting persistently provoking problems, providing profuse pleasure, and producing a palliative, palliative or placid pancia to people processing a propensity for persistence, patience, per spacious uh, acidity, and painstaking proper sanity. I can't even, but it's like a tongue twister itself. Read that. I'm insane. But uh, I'm going to enjoy hanging these up. Um, I need to find a way to hang them up. On my wall, because I want to hang them up on my wall, but uh, I want to do it in a way that doesn't damage them. Um, so I'll figure out something. I might have to, like, I don't know, I'll figure out some way of doing it to protect them so that they can be hung up and not destroyed. But uh, yeah, they're great condition. Um, and this one was a bonus, so it was cool to find. Again, um, so again, it was cool to find uh, this one as a with two. So this one they didn't even have at the store. They had another little game that was interesting, um, but I didn't like the design of it as much. It didn't look as cool to me. Um, these ones I like the graphics on um, a little bit better. So that's why I chose those ones. But yeah. Thank you for watching and peace out.